Okay. Hey, um, great to, to talk with you. I think this conversation started on LinkedIn and we decided to very quickly just then get on a call and see if we can talk about this idea of chart choosers, uh, related data in your chart choosers that I really like, but maybe we should first introduce ourselves. I'm Enrico Bertini. I am an associate professor at Northeastern University and I do research in data visualization and I also have ideas around data and visualization in my newsletter, F I L W D. Nick, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. So I have, a, I have a weird last name. It's Nick Deborah. You just ignore the S's and the T's and it all works out. It's invented by silly French people a long time ago. Yeah. And for, I guess, almost 10 years, I've been teaching data visualization and dashboard design as just an independent kind of corporate trainer. So I've taught in over a dozen countries and at NASA and the UN and I lectured at Yale actually a couple of weeks ago. So kind of across the board, lots of different types of clients. Yes. So what, what caught my attention in our conversation is that you have the really interesting decision, decision tree diagrams to help people decide which mm. chart is best for a given yes. task. On and purpose, on purpose, I said task, because one of the frustrations is the fact that many chart choosers are about deciding what is the right representation for a given yeah. data, data set. Yeah. I've experienced many times the fact that um, you can't really choose only by looking at data. So I posted on LinkedIn kind of like provocative diagram where I showed that given the same information, you can build many different charts. And it's actually a very small set of those that you can possibly make. Yeah. yeah. And this part, a very interesting set of comments and conversations, including many with you. I don't know. You want, we want to start from there. You want to, you want to first say what triggered for your interest in, yeah. in that, in that diagram. Yeah. Well, I mean that, that question essentially, like, yeah, I think you're, you're, I find your question really interesting because you're basically sort of saying like, is there kind of a more kind of structured way of making that choice? Right. You know, because there's, there are dozens of kind of even just common mainstream chart types out there. And so is it the kind of thing where, you know, it's, does it all come down to sort of judgment or intuition that you, can, you know, it's just skills that you build up over time. And so the reason why I actually wrote this book, <laughs> Practical Charts, which came out just, just in November, a couple of months ago, is, is because over time after teaching, you know, thousands of people in, in, you know, many different organizations, I started to see real patterns in terms of when it didn't, didn't make sense to use these various chart types. And it took a long time for that to kind of settle in my mind. And I was aware of chart chooser tools, like, you know, those have been floating around for a long time as well, but I always felt that they were problematic, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because very often if you followed the, the decision tree or the diagram or, or whatever it was, either you would end up with a choice that I felt was really, you know, probably often not, not the right choice, or you ended up with a group of charts, right? And so it's say, oh, you know, you, you're showing the breakdown of a total. Well, you can use a pie chart or a stack bar chart or a regular bar chart or a waterfall chart. You figure it out. And it's like, you yeah. know, my, my workshop, you know, participants were like, ah. <laughs> like, these, yeah, and I had to tell them, like, these are not interchangeable. Like, there are circumstances in, under which it, you know, doesn't, doesn't make sense to use all these chart types. But it's, you know, and it's, it's actually kind of surprisingly complicated, <laughs> but it's not super complicated. And so I started developing these decision trees, which were, I mean, they're, they're I guess you can call them chart choosers, but they're essentially more detailed. They're more robust because the ones that I saw out there, I felt were, just problematically oversimplistic. And so that basically became the basis of my practical charts course, which I started teaching in 2020, and then eventually kind of became the book. And so when you put the question on LinkedIn, yeah. I basically said, well, that's kind of what I've been doing for the last yeah. couple of years. And I posted yeah. some examples of those decision trees. <laughs> yeah. that, that's what I love about these serendipitous conversations that you post something out there and people reply. And sometimes you're completely surprised by what people have, right? They have really good answers or other ideas to explore. I just wanted to mention that another thing that strikes me as problematic is that on the one hand, we have this kind of like over 
simplified world of you can go from data to visualization, which we yeah. just explained is not, doesn't really work really well. But on the other hand, you also have this very fuzzy, oh, it depends on the purpose. <laughs> What, what is the purpose? Yeah. Right. It, it's, it's really hard. And I also just want to quickly mention that there are chart choosers out there that seems to focus more on task on purposes. But again, it's, uh, it's very, very vague. And your work strikes me as a really, really nice synthesis between the two things. So I, I was wondering, would you like to walk me through one or maybe two of your chart choosers? Because I know that in yours, you have both data and purpose. So I'm curious to see the details yeah. of how this works and how you bring these two things together. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, I, I notice sort of the same thing. There's really, when it comes to chart makers, I see there's, there's really kind of two groups, right? There's maybe people who have less experience who tend to think that it's very simple, right? Oh, you got data over time, use a line chart. Breakdown of a total, you know, yeah. use a pie chart. Values with locations, use yeah. a map, right? And so I think once you get even a little bit of experience, you start to realize like, whoa, no, actually, you know, it's going to steer you wrong a lot. And then you have people who are very experienced who tend to think essentially that it's not even really possible to sort of codify or formalize this decision making at all. It's too complex. It's too nuanced. And that's a view that I can certainly appreciate and understand because it's the view that I had for a long mm -hmm. time. And to actually codify the, it, though, in a, in a sort of a reliable way was, to be honest, the hardest work I've ever done. <laughs> like the decision trees that I'll show you in a <laughs> moment were like, I mean, yeah, I lost a lot of brain cells on those because figuring <laughs> out that complex interplay between the nature of the data and the the purpose of, of the chart and sort of how the sequence of decisions need to be made, it doesn't surprise me that it took a long time for that to emerge because it was actually, I mean, hopefully the result looks fairly simple, but the process of figuring it out definitely was not. <laughs> Well, if the results look very simple, it's, it's, it's great. On top of the fact that you figured it out, you also managed to, yeah. <laughs> to present it in a simple way. Yeah. So, Although, of course, they're not as simple as decision trees. But anyways, here, why don't, why don't I show sure, you of course. Uh, what are a couple of examples. So, so this is really, this isn't a decision tree, obviously. This is basically just sort of spelling mm -hmm. out the problem. You know, there as a, as a chart creator, just even creating quote unquote, simple charts for reports and presentations. There are so many choices, right? These are just kind of the common chart types. There are about 50. And as you can see, they're kind of organized into different groups. We have, you know, chart types for data over time, breakdown of total, maps, how variables are related, et cetera. There's nothing terribly novel here. I do organize it a little differently than others, but not a lot differently. But then the next obvious question, of course, is like, you know, well, you know, now what? Okay, you know, I, I, for example, I, I've got some data over time. How do I choose from amongst these various options? And so, yeah. So this is kind of this is you know sort of the beginnings of of a decision tree for showing data over time. And as you can see already, we have a bunch of different choices, right? There are what I think ten, yeah, ten ten mm -hmm. possibilities, mm -hmm. right? And there are circumstances under which each one of these is going to be the best, or in a lot of cases, actually the only safe way to show show the data and so i won't step through the whole thing <laughs> but this is the you know the decision tree that pretty much anyone you know of any experience level can can sort of step through and that will guide them to it's certainly what i consider to be anyways an expert level design choice mm -hmm. and you know if if somebody has is like a, a an absolute guru, then they might actually deviate from it at times. And that's fine. Like, I don't mm -hmm, want this to mm -hmm, be very mm -hmm. kind of dogmatic. Uh, dogmatic, yeah. But my main target audience are people who generally don't have a lot of data visualization experience, and they might not even actually even like it that much. They're not passionate about it like you and I are. It's just, I just need <laughs> to know which chart type to use. And I want to basically avoid embarrassing myself in front of my boss. Sure. Like because I've used some, you know, obviously kind of bad chart type. And so something like this is more complex, right, than a, a standard sort of chart chooser tool, the ones that you see floating around out there. But I think that yeah. it's far more reliable and it's also more specific, right? Because really, you know, there, there's two problems that I see with the conventional chart choosers that are out there. One of them 
is that, of course, I think they'll actually often point you to the wrong choice, like a fairly obviously wrong choice. It's easy mm -hmm. to come up with scenarios where following the path is going to come up with something that really no one would agree is a good choice. And then mm -hmm. the other issue is that they tend to be kind of vague, right? You know, say, oh, you got, the, you know, yeah. you're showing, trying to show the breakdown of a total. Well, you could use a pie chart or a stack bar chart or a regular bar chart or a waterfall chart. Figure it out. Yeah. Right? And it's like, yeah, it's not very helpful yeah. either. Right. And so this actually points you to a specific chart type, not a group of chart types, a, a specific chart yeah. type. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to walk me through some of that? Sure. <laughs> I mean, it would take a while to get through the whole thing because this is really in my in my workshop that I teach. But I think you you told me. I think you showed me earlier when we were offline that you have diagrams like this one where you mark the nodes as being mostly decisions about the data mm. and mostly decisions about purposes. Is yes. that correct? Yeah. So, and, and that was one of the, one of the really tricky things about coming up with these. And this is the result of multiple iterations, of course. But so you're right. Like, so some of these decision points are based on the nature of the data. And so you just look at the data. You don't even have to think about what kind of you know, purpose or message you're trying to communicate. Yeah. And so, for example, these are all about the data. Uh -huh. you, can get the, you can answer these questions based on the data alone. But then there are others, which depend entirely mm -hmm. on the purpose of the chart. And so you have to basically figure out what am I trying to communicate here? What is the question, the specific question I'm trying to answer? What is the kind of comparison that I'm trying to make? What is the particular problem that I'm trying to illustrate? And, and so, you know, this, especially for people who have less experience, is a real kind of aha moment where they're like, oh, you know, that question that I, that I was asking before when I sat down to create a chart, which was what is the best way to show this data? is the wrong question, right? When you're creating yes. a chart, you have to start with, do I know why I'm creating this chart? Yeah. You know, it, what of question course. am I trying yeah. to answer? What problem am I trying to illustrate? Because if you don't know that, if all you have is data, but you don't know what you're trying to say about the data, well, then you won't be able to answer any of these questions. And then you'll be making essentially random design choices. And then you will have charts that communicate random insights. Yeah, I think one interesting aspect here that I didn't notice before is that if, even the decisions that pertain to the nature of the data, they're not necessarily exclusively about what data types you have. Mm -hmm. So for instance, here I see fewer than six or seven cycles, right? Yeah. That's, that depends on the data, but goes beyond the usual, do you have a combination of this and that? It's more like, hey, now let's look at exactly what's inside, right? Uh, maybe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think another aspect that pertains to the data and often has an effect, but it's not mentioned, is anything that is related to scalability. I think yeah. what I notice in my own practice is that sometimes I have to switch from one plot to another just, just because why? one is not scalable enough. I think a classic example would be, we're going into dangerous territories, but Let's say switching from a bar chart to a tree map, mm -hmm. right? So a tree map is very scalable. It's not as effective as a, as a bar chart in comparing the va the actual oh, yes, values yeah. if you want to make a comparison, yes. right? But it's way more scalable. So there are situations where I would say, well, if you have a hundred different objects that you want to visualize, you probably won't do it with a bar chart and you would do it with a tree map, even if it's not as precise or accurate as a bar chart. Would you, would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you can see some examples of that here. Like, you know, like here, for example, I say, you know, if you have cyclical data, you know, seasonal data, for example, or weekly cycles, yeah. one of the questions is how many cycles are there? Because if there are fewer than six or yeah. seven, you can actually show those as an overlapping, you know, line chart. Yeah, but if you yeah, have more yeah. than six or seven, this is going to be a spaghetti mess, and so then you have to switch exactly. to yes. a heat map because a heat map is has kind of more scale, right? You can actually show more cycles, more values without it turning into into spaghetti. So yeah, you're absolutely right. When 
even within these questions of, you know, like what is the nature of the data, it's not just like generally what type of data is it, you know, data over time, breakdown of a total, whatever. There are also, you have to look at various aspects of the data, like how many values are there? Are they sequential or not? Yeah, th those, those, you know, kinds of considerations kind of, you know, come in all the time. And actually, kind of to your point, so here's another one of the, the decision trees in, in my course and in the book as well. <laughs> and I, there, there's the tree map, right, right at the bottom. And so that, yeah. there's decision points in here. Like, if, for example, if there's more than 25 parts and you're trying to show the breakdown of a yeah. total, that's pretty much your only option. I mean, you can, well, actually, that's not true. You can also use yeah. a bar chart because you can have actually very large bar yeah. charts as well. But yeah, here again, you're looking at the number of values. But, you know, to your point, there's also, is it a mix of positive and negative values? Well, that comes into the decision making when, you know, you're choosing from amongst these chart types, because some of these don't work. If you have a mix of positive and negative values, for example, they have to be all positive or all negative. And so, yeah, so yeah, like it, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's not, it was, wasn't easy to come up with, but I think, you know, hopefully anyways, and in fact, I've gotten some universally positive feedback like when i when i show these in workshops yeah, people just latch right onto them because they're like thank you you know <laughs> this is you know <laughs> like it looks kind of complicated but compared to the alternative which is kind of yeah. like here's some charts you figure it out this is this is a much more appealing prospect for sure well the, the other thing that i like here is that now you have some of these branches is not just what is the purpose you have actual decisions that connect to the purpose, right? So what I, what I see here, for example, you have, is it, is it more important to show subtotals or fraction of total, mm -hmm. right? So you can answer this only if you know what, what's the purpose, but this question is very specific. So yes. it's walking you through making purpose way more concrete than just saying, hey, what's the purpose? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, so I could apply the similar kind of yellow and purple coloring that I had on the last one to, to this one. In fact, to yeah. all of the decision trees, because there are, oh, by the way, this is my answer to the question of when it makes sense to use a pie chart. <laughs> it's complicated. <laughs> That's the next thing I was about to ask. Oh, really? I okay. see that you have a pie chart there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really glad to see one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm not a I'm not a pie chart fundamentalist. I don't know Neither am you, I. Yeah. I guess you are not. Either. No, no. In fact, I just a couple of yeah. weeks ago I, I wrote my my manifesto on pie charts. I'd been putting it off for as long as I could, but but yeah. I mean, but I think part of the reason why pie charts are controversial is that it's surprisingly kind of complex to know when to use one. Right. There are many factors that need to be taken into account, and most people just aren't aware of this, and so they end up using pie charts inappropriately, right? In situations where a bar chart or a stack bar chart would have been a better cho a choice, for example. And, but then people kind of overgeneralize and they come to the wrong conclusion. Like they were like, oh, you know, this pie chart is, is terrible. It's useless. And so we shouldn't use pie charts. Like, no, it was just used inappropriately. It should have been a bar chart in that case, yeah. but that doesn't mean that we never use pie yeah, charts. Yeah. Good point. You've got to kind of learn, yes. you know, when to, you know, when to use them. And it's, and there's, it's not that simple, right? It's not, it's not just, well, whenever you have a breakdown of the total, use a pie chart. Actually, no, there are like five or six major chart types, and each of them <laughs> has very specific circumstances under which it's going to be the best choice. Nick, I think we can probably wrap it up here. It's fascinating. I think we could easily go on for a couple of hours. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to make this short. Is there anything else you want to say before we conclude? Well, I mean, just that, you know, I just showed two, two of, of the eight decision trees in the course and in my book, because this is how many are needed to actually, you know, account for the 50 common chart types that I think most people, if you want to call yourself kind of a data visualization professional, these are the chart types, the minimum I think you should kind of be aware of. And I'm in the process of actually trying to nip them all together <laughs> into this insane poster, <laughs> because I, it, it, would, it, it would have to be on a poster to actually be legible. But really the point that I'm making is, is kind of the one that you sort of opened up the, you know, the conversation with, which is that these kind of simple chart choosers out there are, I think, too simple. This, what we're looking at right now, yeah. is I think about as simple as you can make it and it, have it still be but, kind of reliable. And so it's, it's just a fundamentally, you know, more complex question than I think most chart choosers suggest that it is.
Look, that, that's the best thing, best thing I've seen so far. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing this with my students. We covered chart choosers uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I hadn't discovered your, your work yet. So I will definitely share it with everyone. I want to thank you for jumping on a call with me on such a short notice. I, I, I'm very happy that we managed to record this. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely a, a conversation that's long overdue. Great. Great chatting with you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Take care.